Hi guys, this is Matt G from SSW. Today I'm going to talk to you about different roles in your applications and authenticating those different roles. In a lot of situations, you might have a generic user that has access to certain restricted functions. You might have a privileged or admin user as well that might have access to more restricted or more advanced functions. I'm going to show you how you can do that with B2C, Azure AD B2C, which actually doesn't support uh, roles out the box. To give you an example, let's have a look at the uh, SSW Rewards mobile app. Um, and to show you that, we've got a mobile app here which you can log in. You can see we've got a leaderboard uh, and you can see that we can look at various users' profiles here. We can see what achievements someone's got. We can click around. We can, we can earn some more points. We can do a lot of things here. Um, that's pretty useful. Um, we've also got an admin portal, which I'll show you here. Now, the admin portal gives similar functionality. You can also see the leaderboard. You can also view achievements and rewards but the major difference about this admin portal is that you can also add them so using this little plus button here we can add a new achievement that people can scan now we want everyone to use the same authentication process we've got the same backend API for both we don't want to use different login flows we want everyone using the same login flow so for that we're using Azure AD B2C and we want people to log in with an admin role when they access the admin portal. In fact, we want people that don't have that admin role not to be able to log in here at all, um, whereas everyone can use the mobile app and access everything. As I said, Azure AD B2C doesn't support this out of the box, but you can tweak it a little and you can get that functionality to work. So let's have a quick look at how that looks. So if we look at uh, Azure AD B2C in the Azure portal here, you can see under the menu on the left that you've got user flows. Now these are the standard login, uh, sign up, password reset flows that you get out of the box. These are great if you, if you just want to set up something quickly and easily so that you can have lots of users at very low cost access your application. These are absolutely great. Um, but you can customize them, so they don't support roles out of the box, but you can create your own. So just underneath here, we've got what they call Identity Experience Framework. And you notice that's not very meaningfully named. Unfortunately, um, you know, the case with B2C is the documentation and the naming are, are not very discoverable. So it's a bit of a challenge figuring out how you do this, but once you know, it's actually not that hard. So what you do is you create custom login and sign up flows using this section here, this identity experience framework. And the way that you do that is you basically, you go to GitHub and you download the samples. And the samples give you uh, template files uh, that you can use to, to customize these login flows. Uh, and then you basically you modify those samples and you upload them here and you'll see that they're available here for you to use. And we'll come back to these in a moment, but let's have a look at what these, this, this code actually looks like. So you'll see that what we've got here is a couple of these files. Uh, so I've got all of the samples downloaded here, but I'm just gonna look at the important ones. So the main one here that you're gonna customize is this trust framework extensions.xml. Now you'll see here that the first thing that we've done right at the top here is we've defined some custom claims. And our claims are what get added to your JSON web token that's used used as the authentication mechanism. And you'll see that we've added a custom claim type of role. As I said, Azure AD B2C doesn't support roles in the box, but you can do it yourself. You can add this custom claim type of role. Then what we're doing is a little bit further down here, we're defining some workflow steps. So if we go down to these claims provider definitions here, you'll see that we've got one. Uh, this one here, this REST API, this Azure Functions webhook section. Now you'll notice here that we're just using a standard Azure Websites uh, URL. That's because this was kind of a quick and dirty solution for us, but you can customize that. You can use a custom URL. Um, you don't have to use Azure Web, Web Functions. It's just a REST call um, that does what's called a claims exchange. By that we, we mean you, you give it an input claim and you get an output claim. So this could be part of your application. It can be a custom application. Uh, I recommend a function. Um, I think that even if your function is getting user and role data out of your application, it's really a good practice to have just this function that just does that one thing, which is does that claims exchange for you. Um, uh, and let that function query your API or your application rather than having B2C do it directly. Um, so you can see here that what we're doing here is we're calling a URL and we're sending it an input claim type of uh, email and we're getting an output claim type of role. And we're gonna have a look at that function in a moment and see how that works. But the next thing I wanna show you is that if we look further down in this file, you can see that we're defining a user journey called sign up and sign in. And if we keep looking through this file, we see we've got a step in this journey here um, that is calling that Azure uh, Functions webhook process that we just looked at a moment ago. Uh, and we, we, we're calling this claims exchange get role data. 
Then if we have a look at the XML file called sign up or sign in, this is the actual file that's the definition of your user flow. And you can see here that we're doing a claim type reference of role. And what that means is that the token that's generated by this flow will include that role. So that's really cool. So it, 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 these are uh, uh, not that hard to understand once you get your head around it. And the best way to do that is really to just give it a go. Um, there is some good documentation by bloggers on the internet. The Microsoft documentation, a little bit opaque, but it's not that hard once you kind of get the hang of it. So as I said, the next step that I'm going to show you is the Azure Web, web function. Um, and if we have a look here, it's really, really simple. So it's just an Azure function. It's not doing anything clever. It's just using the email address that's being sent as an input claim. Now, what we decided here with our uh, re rewards app is that anyone who works at SSW should be given an admin role and should be given access to that admin portal. So what we do is we basically, we get the data that's sent into this Azure function uh, and we check to see whether it's an array of emails or whether it's a single email address. If it's an array, we just grab the first one. And then what we do is just some simple string manipulation here. You can see that we're splitting it out. And then when we're returning data, all we're doing here is a very simple check to say, is the part, we, so we split it at the app at symbol, so that the bit after the at symbol is the SMTP domain. We're checking to see whether the SMTP domain is ssw.com.au. So do you have an SSW email address? If you do, if this returns true, we set the value to admin. And if not, we set the value to user. So what this means is that if you log in with an SSW email address, you get an admin role. If you don't, you log in with a different email address, you get a user role. And we don't have to worry too much about people spoofing addresses or any of that kind of stuff. This is all managed by B2C and the email addresses are validated. So you know that if someone's logging in, they've got an email address that they have in fact verified. So we're very confident that we can use this as our admin mechanism. So that's all very cool. So let's have a quick look at uh, see it in action. So I'm just going to go back to B2C here. And what you'll see in the portal here uh, that you can do is you can actually click on one of these workflows. And you can actually do a test run of it right here in the portal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select an application here. The way that it works, it's just a standard OAuth. We've got different clients and applications registered. I just going to use mobile app. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. Uh, and I'm going to select the reply URL as jwt.ms. jwt.ms is basically a JSON web token viewer that Microsoft give you. And what that means is that once we've authenticated, that uh, token, is, instead of getting back to our application, is going to be sent to jwt.ms which is going to allow us to have a look at it. So let's just run this workflow now. And I'm going to log in with an email address that is not an SSW email address. And we'll see what happens. So I'm going to log in with my Gmail address here. Just going to enter my password. And this is going to take us through to jwt.ms. It can be a, a little bit slow the first time you kick it off. B2C is a busy service, a lot of people using it. Whilst we're waiting for that, oh, here we go. So we can see here at the top, this is the token that has been given to us. This is a JSON web token that's been given to us. Uh, JWT.ms, as I said, really cool tool. It actually allows us to inspect that token. So if we look down here, we can see the claims that are in that token. And we can see that there is a, a role claim here. And the value of that claim is user. So that worked really well. I logged in with an email address that wasn't an SSW address. It behaved exactly as we expected. I got a role of user. But let's see what happens if I log in with an SSW. SSW address. So I'm just going to run this again. Uh, and this time I'm going to log in with my SSW email. And let's just give that a go. So we should see that the same thing happens. It logs us in, it redirects us to jwt.ms. We can see that we've got a token here that it's given us. And if we have a look down here, we can see that the role claim in this token here has a value of admin. So that worked really, really well. I'm really happy with that. So what we've seen here is that you can you, you, you take something like B2C that doesn't support roles out the box, and you can do some small steps here to customize it, to tweak it, and it lets you add roles to your application. And that works really, really well. Thanks very much, guys.